there's always been a huge debate on whether or not you should stretch your watercolour paper. Now I have my own views on this and I've been very vocal about it. So the question is, is it really worth stretching your paper or is it a little bit pointless? Let's find out. Okay, to make this absolutely fair, I'm using the same paper as I would ordinarily use. And this is Arches. It's a rough surface paper and I've attached two identical pieces to my watercolour board and I have attached it in the way that I would normally do with my low tack mask and tape. You can use any tape that you want to, um, it doesn't really matter. Some people like to use the gummed tape, um, wet that down. Any tape will be absolutely fine. So the one on my left is going to be the stretched and the one on my right is going to be our control experiment which is the non-stretched and what I would ordinarily do. There are a few ways that you can stretch your watercolour paper. You can spritz it with a water bottle like this, uh, saturate the paper that way. Some people like to soak it in the bath or the sink, whatever. As long as your paper is absolutely soaking wet in order for it to stretch properly, that's fine. I'm going to be using this thick brush and apply the water all over the paper that way. The thing with watercolour stretching, with stretching watercolour paper, you need to have your paper absolutely soaking wet for it to buckle and then go back to normal. I am going to film the entire thing on time lapse using my mobile phone, as you can see me setting up here so that I can prove to you what will happen as we stretch the paper. What I'm expecting is as soon as we apply that water is the paper will uh, buckle and the idea being when the paper dries, it will dry flat. Now, my argument for this is that the, the same thing will happen on the non-stretch paper when I apply my paint, but I'll explain that to you in a little while. So you can see here that I'm just throwing the, the water onto the paper like this. Now, it's not always necessary um, to stretch your watercolour paper, we'll say. Now, ultimately, it's up to you whether you're, you stretch your watercolour paper or not. It depends on personal preference, the specific way that you're painting and what you're working on, um, but it is a time-consuming process, and as I said, it, to me, it isn't necessary. Um, I'm going to be doing a large wash today. Um, you might say, okay, it's all very well for you, Ray. You're, um, you know, you're doing your botanicals and you don't use a lot of water, which is true, but it doesn't matter. So on the first one, we're going to just let that dry and I'm going to film the process and we'll see it buckle as we work through the experiment. So all we can do now is wait for it to dry. So you can see the setup here. My phone is going to film it on time lapse and we'll be able to see as it buckles and as it will straighten up as it dries. So what we're going to be left with hopefully is our two pieces of paper um, that look identical when the first piece of paper on the left has been completely dried. So here is the footage from my mobile phone. You can see the paper just buckling there and it's stretching itself out as it dries. Um, this took a couple of hours, but I did leave it dry completely overnight. So here we are overnight. This one here, as you can see, it's, it's buckled and it's now flattened out. So it looks pretty much the same as the one on the right. It has come away from the board a little bit, which is what I would expect anyway. But at this point, they both look exactly the same. Okay, the stretch paper has stretched and it's dried down and it's completely flat. So that is the purpose of stretching your watercolour paper so that we see it buckle. We get all the buckling done out of the way so that when we apply our paint, um, hopefully it won't buckle and um, warp. So here we go with our paint application. Again, I'm going to be doing two large washes. So I'm going to be using two bright colours so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to use a, like a reddy orangey colour and I think I'll just throw in a little bit of magenta as well to make it super vibrant and super bold so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to mix up these colours. So now we're going in with magenta. As I said, I want this to be nice and vibrant and bold so that you can see exactly where I'm applying the paint. Of course, it does matter um, as to what paper you're using. Um, I'm only speaking from this type of paper. So, you know, if you're going to maybe use a less um, expensive watercolour paper, then I don't know, the results might be different. But this is from my experience and I'm going to preface it by saying, you know, it is the way I paint. So, OK, let's go on with the stretch paper first. I'm just applying that first brush stroke. Nice and watery, the paint. So no excuses here for that paper not to buckle if it's going to, which it will. So just applying that paint straight onto the paper using my brush and carrying on with both of these one by one. You can see I'm applying them in tandem and I'm using exactly the same amount of paint and pigment on both of these papers. 
So what am I expecting to happen here? Both of these papers will buckle, okay? The stretch paper, the paper on the left, it will buckle in exactly the same way as the non-stretch paper will. And what I'm expecting is when they dry down, both of them will dry flat. So the process of stretching my watercolor paper, the paper on the left, was pointless because they're both going to buckle anyway with this other wash and they will both dry in exactly the same way. They will both dry flat once they're taped to that board. There was no need for me to stretch the first paper. But am I right? Will it happen? Will they both dry in the same way? We'll have to wait and see. So I'm just applying paint like this. Both of them are going to buckle, as I've said, and then we have to let them dry in the way that we would normally do with our watercolour paper. So we've got two really bright, bold washes here, and we're going to see how they dry down. Okay, so both of these have had a chance to thoroughly dry. Um, I've left both of them overnight, and they are in a my, the normal room that I would work in, okay, to make it absolutely fair. So we have the stretched one and the non-stretched one, and to me, they both look exactly the same. You can see that with the stretch one, because of the amount of water that I applied onto the paper, it's buckled a little bit and it's come away. Obviously, that would be expected because the paper and the, the tape that I've used to tape it down is a low tack. So that's absolutely fine. That's workable. You can, of course, use something like um, a, a gummed tape. I think that's traditionally used where you wet your gum and you stick it down, but that doesn't matter. So let me just take these off for you so that you can see the comparison. Now obviously it's going to matter which paper you use and different papers will react in different ways and I'm only speaking from my own experience in the papers that I'm used to using. So let me show you them one by one. This is the stretched paper, you can see it's just a tiny little bit buckled but that is what you would expect from any paper and you're not going to get any better than that. This is the non-stretched um, yeah, literally no difference. Um, if you can see a difference, then please point it out to me because in my opinion, there is no difference at all. In fact, if anything, I would say the non-stretched one is better simply because this has had more layers of water on, if you like, although the water had pigment in it. So in case you're wondering, well, it's all very well doing bigger washes. I don't do that, as you know, on my channel. We do a whole host of watercolour painting. Uh, here are some that we've done on the channel. So just to show you, none of these papers have been stretched. It's all been straight from the board, as I've shown you on example two. So you can just dive in and paint whatever you want to. Thank you for watching. I really hope this makes sense to you. And I really hope that you just dive in and get your paint onto the paper without being worried about stretching it. So I hope this expels the myth as I see it and um, just get painting. And um, if you want to know how to paint any of these tutorials, I will link a few of them in the description box underneath so that you can join in and do it for yourself. And don't forget, I provide you with a free traceable and a line drawing so that you can trace them down if you don't like drawing. And no, it isn't cheating. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week for a brand new tutorial.